Hi, I'm David from The Creative Outlet. If you've ever wondered how you would get in touch with your friends or loved ones in an emergency situation, especially one in which a regular phone or internet connection won't work for you, ham radio is a solid answer. For those of you who don't know, ham radio, or amateur radio as it is also known, is a licensed radio service in most countries around the globe. In order to transmit on amateur radio, you need to have a license, which involves a test that isn't difficult to pass. Today we're going to talk about my journey to getting on HF, which will allow me to theoretically talk around the world from the comfort of my own home without any infrastructure between me and the station I'm contacting. But because the subject of building my station and especially my antenna may be a little dry and doesn't lend itself to storytelling for a mass audience, I'll put the details of the build as subtitles and in the description below so I can make this a bit more interesting for newcomers who don't know much about the hobby. Know anyone who's a ham? Share your stories in the comments. Amateur radio is a hobby that involves all aspects of radio craft by non-professionals. That involves talking to fellow operators around the world, as well as building and innovating your own radio equipment, which is what I'm doing today. People often ask why amateur radio is still relevant in the modern age, when we can communicate around the world with the phones in our pockets. My answer to those people is, for the 99.99% of times when you just need to get in touch with someone conveniently and quickly, a phone will do it. With an amateur radio license, you can build and learn and innovate on technology that is over a hundred years old, and yet is still being used to communicate with spacecraft. That's right, every wireless technology you've ever used, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, cell phones, it's all radio. Another thing to consider is that in the current age, where oppressed peoples are taking to Twitter to spread their story, their governments sometimes silence them by shutting down access to the internet. Even in wartime, most countries have agreements to allow hams to talk to each other. During the Cold War, American hams made contacts and even friends with hams in Soviet Russia. If you want to know more about amateur radio in general, check out the episode on the subject I produced for our podcast, What Makes You Happy. Since I got my amateur radio technician license, the lowest level, in January of 2019, I've made numerous contacts using my $25 Baofeng radio, which you can buy on Amazon. I quickly upgraded to a much better radio, the Yaesu 400, connected to a homemade antenna in my attic, which allowed me to talk to people over 20 miles away. Since then, however, I upgraded my license, not to general, the middle level, but to amateur extra, the highest level, and now I have more frequency privileges. You see, the radios I've been using until now work in the VHF or UHF radio frequency range, which is great for short-range communications, reliable up to about 60 miles, depending on your equipment. But there is so much more out there. I was gifted this beautiful ICOM 735 HF radio. The HF range is a much lower set of frequencies than VHF or UHF. The radio in your car, for example, goes as low as 88 MHz on FM, and those stations are all within your city or not too far outside it. On AM, however, the stations only go as high as 1.6 MHz, which is why you can hear New York from LA, and at night on shortwave radio, you can hear Spain, South Africa, or China. That's the power of HF. Before we finish this project, can I ask you, if you've enjoyed this content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more content. Be sure to hit that bell icon too, so you get notified each time we release a new video. The problem with HF is that the antennas are huge. The antenna I'm building is relatively small, only 32 feet long. I'll be putting it in my attic, which is not ideal, but it should work just fine. Once I've built the antenna and installed it in my attic, run the cable down to my shack, and plugged everything in, I should be on the air. We have routed the coax down outside the house into here, and we're about to install it in the station. Let's check it out. Let's fire it up. 
back in the ham shack, I turned on the power supply, powered up the radio, and for the first time in my amateur radio career, was able to actually listen to HF Amateur Radio. What language is that? It's Spanish. The antenna needs to be tuned, of course, so I quickly checked its efficiency using tools on the radio. Seems like it's doing well from the top to the bottom of the band. That's great! Alright, it was like 1.25? 1 1.3? When we come back next time, I'll get on the air myself and make some contacts. With any luck, I'll be able to talk to other countries around the world. Well, it's another day later, and I looked up the proper way to check the efficiency of the antenna on this radio. I thought that I was measuring the SWR properly. It turns out I was not. The numbers are very, very high, which is very, very bad. Bad efficiency means that not only will you be unable to send out as strong a signal as you would otherwise, it also might damage your radio. We'll need to sort this out before I make any contacts on the air but that's an adventure for another day. Come back next time when we sort out my antenna issues and actually meet people on the air. See you next time.